Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually a little bit excited to do this part of X231. Uh, most of the jobs up till now have not been fun at all, but I'm actually looking forward to this. So we are going to get the foot plates and the brake lock mechanism and all kinds of little parts and pieces and doodads all mounted up here for good. You can tell by the, the laying down brake pedals, we are fresh off of behind the scenes number 154 already where we did the uh, the fitting and the, the test run episode for getting all that stuff worked out. So everything on the bench over there should be pretty much ready to just bolt up and go. Um, one thing I need to point out, the majority of the mounting holes for all of the brackets and the foot plates are just open holes. Okay, that one goes all the way in. Same with that, same with that. They were just landing threaded holes wherever they needed them to be in the case here. We've got a couple more all the way in. We're touching gears there. We're touching gears there. So the only mounting points for foot plates that look like they had any kind of forethought put into them at all are these, uh, the four that are on the sides. There's two on each side of the rear case. They're blind holes. We got those two blind holes over there as well. So everything else is going to require thread sealer if it's going to be a permanent install. And for this episode, we just have a stud that goes there and a stud that goes there that are gonna be permanent. Everything else is just getting fitted up to make sure it's good to go. So we will start by throwing those two studs on in. I'll get sealer on the threads and let's get rolling. First one, I'll lift the pedal up a little bit. You can see it a little easier. And stud number two. The reason for those studs is these spacers. And the reason for these spacers is kind of neat. They needed to get the foot plate out beyond the bump out in the side of the case where that reverse idler gear hides back in there, so space it out. So the spacers go on the studs, and this is kind of a fortunate deal. The edge of this spacer interacts with the ear that's on the bottom of the clutch lever, and also doubles as the extreme upward travel stop. So that all worked out really well. Now we can start throwing the foot plates together for that side. I want to show you all something I noticed uh, when I was cleaning these, so they, cut these slots in and weren't that picky about how they were going to form them. You can see the ragged edges on this one and even on this one as well. They just drilled a whole bunch of holes side by side by side and then just kind of maybe filed them out a little bit. That was good enough. It's all they had to do for a prototype, you know? It didn't have to be any better than that, so. All right, outside here, so the rear one, here's our cutout for the back corner. So that's... We'll head it upside down. Okay. Yep. Outside. Cut out to the outside. And these two sides are assembled with different spacing in and out uh, because of the features on the side of that transmission case. So I need yeah, this one and this one. We're going heavily by witness marks here. We've got the spacer that goes in between and we're running an all Rockford bolt crew. See that? Yeah. We're, uh, we're legit here. We don't have any... Um, Substandard hardware, we'll put it that way. Everything is just gonna go together hand tight for now because when you're dealing with all of these different components, then you have to fit it all up. You don't finalize anything until you've finalized everything. So in other words, until everything has been started, nothing gets tightened down. Diagonal brace now, and yeah, we closed those holes up quite a bit with the welder. Again, we're just lining up old witness marks. Okay.
This bell housing bolt comes out because the brace goes under it. Lining it in on the studs now. Alright. We'll secure these real quick. At least you can't fall on the floor then. Throw these bolts in at the back. Once again, Rockford. <laughs> Just, they're all correct. And now, what I incorrectly called a bell housing bolt a couple minutes ago, it, it struck me just after I turned the camera off. This is a transmission case flange bolt. Can go back in, so we can hinge the brace up in place and it all lines in. And finally, the forward diagonal brace. One bolt at the bottom and bolt lock washer and nut at the top. And once the bolts are tight, it's a really solid platform. Of course, we've got plenty of bracing underneath. It should be. So this brings us all the way back around to all the former clutch pedal conversations we've had in the comment section. Uh, as of late, even a few people have brought up again what this mystery ear with that threaded hole is for. To me, it looks like it was intended to be like an upward travel stop at one time. So there would have been a bolt like with a jam nut in there and it would have come up against a backstop back here. But then the way the case is shaped, there's nothing for it. And being that that spacer for the foot plate ended up acting as a perfect stop. I don't think they ever used it. I can see this in one of the archive photos and there was nothing in it even then. So my speculation is it was just a provision that turned out to be unnecessary. But other people had commented at the time that I put the pedal on how the two return springs up here on the release bearing were not strong enough to overcome the weight of the pedal. So just the leverage of that was going to have that bearing under load all the time. And when I put, or when I reconditioned the clutch rod, I took a cotter pin out of a hole right here. There, I think you can see it right off the end of my finger. And I didn't know what it was for. It was just placed into the rod and the end was folded over and it wasn't doing anything. But I found this spring with the foot plates and this used to have some prairie gold paint. You can see it, I missed just a little bit there when I was cleaning it up. So it was on the outside of the tractor at one time. And it's the exact same spring as these in here. And going back to this archive photo, if we blow it up, we can see there was clearly a spring on the bottom of this foot plate. And you can see it hooked into this hole right here. So that cotter pin, I'm thinking, was a hook point further back on that clutch rod for another assist spring to pull on that to try and keep this pedal up. So I'm gonna hang this spring on there and just see what happens. I'm thinking this might've been the one that was with it, but it, it's been so many years since we took this apart. We're just trial and error now. I'm just gonna drop this in. I'm not going to fold anything, make anything permanent, but hook the spring right there, bring it out here. And yeah, I mean, it, it helped it a little bit, it brought the pedal up, not all the way up. Yeah, it won't, yeah. Yeah, it's, that one's not strong enough. I think the, from the picture, it looked like they had a larger coil spring on there anyway than this. Um, yeah, the, that's probably not the original one it, it had, but it's probably one that they had put on at one point after the original one broke. Let's try something a little bit heavier. I found this spring at my hardware store. It's a little bit larger diameter coil. The hooked ends aren't exactly the same, but we can place it in and see if it at least has a good spring rate to help that pedal. And yeah, we've got, we've got some more tension on it. It's up a little bit higher. 
Oh, it's close. It it just it just wants to. Yeah, I'm. That would be a great help, you know, taking a lot of load off of that bearing. But unless you hooked your toe behind this and pulled it back, it's not going to have returnability. And I want it to return on its own. So I think we are on to uh, what that cotter pin was for. I need to get a stiffer spring still. I'm gonna leave this one here for now just because it's, it will hold it up at least for a thumbnail picture for this video. So yeah, um, still a fail on the return spring, but we've got the left side panels in place. Go back to the store, get a stiffer spring. We'll try it again. The right side foot plates go together much the same way. We leave the diagonal brace out for now. I'll show you why when we go over to the tractor. And the other main difference with this side, of course, is this front brace uh, bracket. It's the tight bend, low drop style that is virtually identical to what is found on both sides on the production tractors. Once again, too, everything is just left hand tight helps you to line it all in. And before I bolt this up, I should probably mention, I never knew what these bumps were for on the top of each uh, brake housing compartment. In this case, the rearmost uh, sections just rest on top of them. So it's like a built-in brace for the back portions. Now, whether that was planned or that just happened to work out that way, I'm not sure, but they do a pretty good job of supporting these uh, these rear plates with just being bolted in two spots toward the inside. And before we start work on the diagonal brace, this case flange bolt comes out. And I've also got two new brake pedal return springs. And I found during the initial fit up that the easiest way to get those pedal return springs installed is to take each one of them off because each one has a small hole for a spring to hook into. There's the hole in this one. And it's just easier having these off of the tractor so that you can hook it in and bend it around. You're not fighting clearances against the case. Things like that. And finally the brace now. I found the two holes that were in it right there and right there for attaching those two pedal return springs were just at an odd angle. They were trying to twist the springs and they didn't want to hook in the bottom and the top cleanly. And this guy just wants to hang down so we'll let him do that. Uh, so what I did was steal the idea from that clutch rod over there. I took a couple of heavy cotter pins and I just folded them over in the holes and these Loops at the end make perfect hook points for those brake pedal springs and they can pivot and turn and they can help that spring to equalize out so we're not trying to twist coils, we're not trying to bend the hooks. That just worked very, very well. So I also found too that it's best to get these hooked up to the brace first and then get the brace put in. And it's really fun because everything's under just enough tension that nothing really wants to cooperate. Start it in up at the top. Lining the bolt in is not a lot of fun, but it can be done. And once again, everything tight. 
good rigid platform and there's nothing wrong with these springs at all. They have no trouble holding those brake pedals up against the platform and off of the pull rods. So I've got adjustment figured out side to side. I like that amount of free play. Very good. So let's move on to the brake lock. Here it is, prototype pieces on this side, production over here, there's not a lot of difference. They both work on the same principle. The prototype one, clearly handmade. It's evident where they had slit the front of the flapper to bend it down and then they welded and flushed the edges. And they, uh, drilling the hole for the spring, they had like a, a false start first attempt, second attempt, they got it centered up pretty well. The production equivalent is a little bit smaller but essentially the same piece. It's all cleanly stamped. Single piece, no cutting, no welding. Uh, the rods are clearly different. You can tell the production one is a lot longer than the prototype that has to do with the, the difference in foot plate mounting height. Um, this one has an extra little kick right here. That's because they used the guide bracket for the top, which is the same between the two tractors, so we don't need to compare anything there. But the guide bracket came all the way up to the tight bend right there and that's what limited the downward uh, travel of this and that's also why they had to kick it up a little bit right there whereas the guide bracket on the prototype just kind of holds it about here and they used this cotter pin with this little flat washer under it to rest right on top of the foot plate kept that held up where it needed to be the uh, spring for the uh, lever to flapper on the prototype was pretty well mangled up so I found this one it's a good stand-in replacement let's get it put together the rod will go in first as soon as I get the flat washer in place start it in through the hole in the foot plate and next I need to take these two bolts out of the top cover for the transmission because that is what the guide bracket is held on by working down on the bottom end now. Again, I learned from the initial fit up that it's a lot easier to get both ends of that spring attached before you put the flapper on the shaft. And for this to work properly, it needs to have two washers beneath the cotter pin. That just sets the proper clearance of the, uh, the flapper to the stop. And we're not gonna bend this over. This is all just, again, uh, temporary because all of it has to come back off for the priming stage but this has to have a certain amount of end float in and out for this pivot to work properly function check apply both brake pedals pivot the lever around that will pull the spring opposite direction on the flapper takes the flapper down and the flapper engages with all the notches on the brake pedals to release do another brake pedal application lever back the other way the spring pulls the flapper up that is actually, that's actually kind of fun. <laughs> it's, it seems kind of uh, cheap, but it works pretty well. There it is, everybody. We've got a little bit more of the operator's station in place. It's a good thing there's not a seat on this because I'd already be up there trying it out. Um, this was fun though, while it lasted. We haven't had a whole lot of fun days on this project since picking back up with it, but I just love it. I got all the stuff put in, the brakes are finalized. Oh, and right after I shut the camera off from that last scene, the part store called. The bearings and the seal came in finally for the hydraulic pump. So as long as I was making another trip to town today, I stopped by the hardware store and I found a much better spring. So I got that put in. It's a larger coiled, heavier spring. Looks a lot more like the one that was in the archive photo, but look at this. That is the operation that I wanted to have on that clutch pedal. It's got plenty of strength and pulls it right up where it needs to be. So we're finally happy with that. And a um, couple questions from the comment section. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but under the last episode, someone asked if these holes on each side were to be used for anything. And I don't think anything goes in those at all. 
we can look at that archive photo and I think we can see it tell you what it's easier to blow it up right here there's that open hole right there above where that pull rod goes in so I don't think anything at all was put in those spots and there's a few other holes on that back end housing that I don't think are going to be used either um, they might have had other ideas or designs that never came to fruition but it's interesting to compare the difference in these photos to how high the operators stations were you can see on x231 of course you know we've talked about the really high mounted foot plates and the steering wheel is well up above the hood and we had like this toolbox thing beneath the seat and then the three-point lift was below that you compare that to this uh, picture of the production version on the front of my old manual here and yeah look how low those foot plates are just about down to the bottom of the transmission steering wheels way down seat is right down on top of the three-point but the shift handle is about in the same place the only difference is it's kind of in front of your chest on the production version and it's i'd say more down toward your knees on the prototype which brings us once again back to this footstep that i took off of well this foot plate right here in the last episode and i didn't think that belonged on the tractor because it's clearly not there in this photo but looking at this now okay so i built this stand at curb height meaning when we put wheels on this tractor it's already as high as it's going to be and looking at how high these panels are now that's hip height on me and i'm not short all right so i don't think i'd want to be making that step i mean just trying to it would be something else but you know this is definitely not a down on the farm piece um this leg that i'm holding on to has been bent in and we've been bent right there but if i straightened all of that out we would line in with this outside hole and then on that slot and that is going to put that step about knee level on me which is going to be about the right height for climbing up on this so i'm thinking they added this after the fact because they found that was just such a tall platform and i think that also plays into their thinking behind just dropping the whole operator station in general on the production version uh, it's just the whole process i think all this stuff is really neat and this is definitely unique a unique tractor sorry yeah this was fun all right so back to the grind that means that hydraulic pump over there is next we can't put it off any longer um we'll start in on that and i don't know if we're gonna get the whole thing done in the next episode i'll at least get a start on it thank you again for watching everyone the battle continues <laughs>